Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson, and welcome to Microsoft Project for Beginners. This is the fourth in our series, and today we are going to be looking at how do you apply costs and resources to a schedule. There will be two parts on the resource videos that I'll be preparing. Today's will give you a good idea of how to create a resource table, what the different columns mean, and how you can apply resources and costs to a basic schedule. So if you followed me up to this point, this is the fourth video. You, I've been using a pretty simple setup here. So as you can see by your screen, uh, tasks one to seven finish. I've got some pretty simple durations in there and I have the predecessors column set up. So if you wanna take a few minutes, maybe you freeze the, the video and then you just type these in on your own Microsoft project. Then if you're actually following along and clicking the keys as I go along, it'll really resonate with you and it'll really stick with you and you'll get it much faster and much quicker that way. But the other way you can do is watch the video and then try, try on your own applying different things and go back and forth to the video. That's another approach to it that works uh, very well um, as also. Okay, so let's get started. So we have these activities or tasks written here. We have these durations. And maybe what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a summary task. Uh, we've talked about that in the previous videos. And I'll have that the previous video links in my description below. So if you just go to the description, you can see the previous links. I also have a wealth of more advanced Microsoft Project videos on my YouTube channel. Uh, if you subscribe and you click on my little face there, you can see uh, the playlist and look under the playlist Microsoft Project. I also have a lot of videos on construction project management. I'm a professor of construction project management and I'm trying to build a community here. So please subscribe and leave comments. All right, so I'm going to insert a summary task here. So I'm going to right click insert task and let's just call it summary task maybe for lack of a better word here because we're keeping things simple in Microsoft Project for beginners. And so I've created this activity. It's sitting there. It's above the other activities. And I just highlighted everything down the side. You know, you just click with your mouse, left click on your mouse. You should see that arrow pointing in that direction. If you let go, you'll see four points. And you don't really want that because what that does is it moves an activity. You don't want to move the activity. You want to highlight them. So you click out of that, click back, and then just scroll down. And that will select them all. If you go to the task tab right there, you can uh, click the indent um, icon under the task tab and now you've created a summary task. All right, so we're going to create uh, resources and we have to go to a different table. And half of the battle of getting to use Microsoft Project and know what you're doing is figuring out where you are and where you want to go. So right now, if I click on this square icon box, and maybe I'll just make this a little bigger so you can see my text a little better. I'm going to go to the Format tab. I'm going to click on Textiles. I'm going to go to number 14, click OK. And that makes things a lot bigger. Unfortunately, when I make things bigger, I kind of lose some of the real estate with the Gantt chart, but that's OK for today. All right, so we've got these activities here. And we are currently in the Entry view as I click on that square icon box and right click. That's one way to switch between a bunch of tables and there's more tables or sheets. If I slide all the way to the left, I right click, you see this list. In previous videos, we've looked at the network diagram, which shows the network of all the activities that we've created and how they're related to each other, right? So there's a whole bunch of different tables that we'll be looking at in this series. But for now and today, we actually wanna to go to the resource sheet. So the resource sheet, and again, I'll make my text a little bit bigger in the format tab. I'm just going to make it uh, 14. You don't have to do that unless it's small on your screen too. Okay, so this is the table where we create resources. So I'm going to create a resource and maybe I'll call, maybe I'll call one of them uh, site super, another one maybe PM. Another one, so I'm coming up with names that would maybe suit for a construction project. Uh, maybe I'll call this one drywall uh, sub. And maybe I'll say plumber. And uh, I'm gonna say another one, I'm gonna say drywall supplier. Right, and I'm gonna say square 
feet. There we go. Just to show you the different ways that it can be applied. So we've created this very simple resource sheet. And you'll notice this column here. It says type. And if you click down, you've got three types to choose from in MS Project. You've got work, material, and cost. So work, material, and cost. Those are the three categories. And that's all you have the choice amongst in how you set up your resources in MS Project. So work is, am I going to pay this uh, individual by an hourly rate? So I would suggest, you know, even if they're on salary, work is going to be the closest you're going to get. So you figure out roughly what their salary works out to hourly and you'd put an hourly rate there. So let's say it was a site super and it was $100 an hour, PM $100 an hour. Um, drywall sub, we don't want as work. We want them as a cost. And a cost is like we're contracting the work out. So maybe you've got a drywall contractor and you're contracting them to do the work and they said they'll install the drywall and tape the drywall for you for a certain amount of money. So for that, we'll put them down as a cost. Same thing with a plumber. So they've given us a cost on what they're going to do. We're not going to monitor them by the hour. Now, you know what? If we were paying them by the hour, we might want to monitor them by the hour. But generally, like in construction, this is usually how it would go. Material, it's not really what you think for material. Material, the way that MS Project has it down, it's something that you would want to measure either by linear footage, uh, square footage, square uh, cubic meters, square meters, uh, whatever the measurement that you want, whether it's length, area, or volume, you can put that. So in this case, I'm going to do drywall. I set it in the name just as a reminder, but I'm going to put it right here, square foot. And very important, you know, you're watching this video. Later on, you'll go, why won't it let me type in here? I don't understand why it won't let me type in this actual column. Because you've set this as work, cost. The only one that lets you type in there is material. That's the only column you can do that in. So you've got to keep that in mind. And that happens even when you're in a different screen and you're applying resources. If it doesn't let you do something, you've got to think, hmm, did I set it the way I wanted to set it as work or cost or material? Like cost, I can't put an hourly rate for cost because it's a, it's a, a fixed amount that we contracted for the work. So here I can't put it. The actual cost I put into another screen. Now, MS Project lets you do a lot of different things in this, and that's why I'll have a follow-up video on this where I'll get into things a little bit more detail. Um, you can group things. So maybe you've got a long list of resources that you want to have. So in this grouping, I'm going to say Site Super, and I'm going to say that they're an employee. Uh, employee. Drywall Sub, I'm going to say that they are a um, sub sub and maybe drywall supplier i'm going to say they're a vendor so because i put names in there it, microsoft project allows you to organize things based on the data you put in the particular fields so if i actually go to uh, view the view tab this is very helpful to start learning this stuff because these these three categories highlight filter group by are very useful as you get more familiar with the program. So I'm going to go group by resource group because I just set up the resource group. And then it puts everything in nice, even categories so I know where everybody is. You could imagine if you had, you know, 100 resources here and they were all scattered about, it'd be nice to have all your employees in one area, all your subs in one area, and your vendors in one area. And if you get tired of that, you can always say no group and it just brings it back to um, normal for you. Uh, so that's very helpful to do. Now, Site Super PM, I'm actually going to add another one down here. I'm going to put Labors at the bottom. Two reasons I'll show you in a minute. That should be work. I'm going to keep that as work, but I'm going to put them as an employee. And you know what? You see how this says maximum 100%. Well, Site Super and PM, well, that kind of makes sense that it's maximum 100%. They're one person typically. But Labors, you know, I could have 10 Labors. If I had 10 laborers, I should put 1,000%. If I have two laborers, I should put 200%. And that identifies how many I have available. So if you have a company and you only have two laborers that work with you, 
just put 200%. And if any, at any point you assign more than two, the program will say, hey, you assign more than two. Is that what you want? Are you going to hire somebody else? What are you going to do? So that's why that 200% is there. And I'll put in an hourly rate here of $80. In this case, I'm putting the, some of you are saying labor, $80. I'm putting the burdened rate. So the burdened rate is including things like compensation and uh, you know things that you have to pay into pension plans and holiday pay and all these other add-on things that you, union dues that you have to collect and those types of things. So uh, that's why that's there. Right, because this would come from your budget uh, when you want to apply cost to a, a cost loaded schedule. Now, if you only wanted to, because this is Microsoft Project for Beginners, if you only wanted to just apply a resource to an activity to say, hey, we need this resource, so I want to hold them accountable, I don't want to put costs or anything else, then I would just type in the resources. They could stay as all of them could stay as work just don't fill any costs in and then that's fine you just won't be able to monitor the project for costs but you can monitor it for accountabilities and how well the accountabilities are holding up there is overtime rate i'm not going to get into that right now but basically you can you can assign overtime rate if they work over a certain amount of hours or past certain time frames cost per use it's not used that much but what it means is that if for example, if I had drywall supplier and I've got so much per square foot, I should say, let's say 50 cents a square foot. So if I have 10,000 square feet of drywall, that should end up costing uh, $5,000. But maybe every time I assign drywall, I've got to get it delivered. And every time they deliver it, maybe they charge uh, 50 bucks or 100 bucks, right? And so I should put cost per use. And then every time uh, I deliver, whether I do get delivered 10,000 uh, square feet or 5,000 square feet, there's an extra charge of 100, then that would track that. Like I said, it's not that frequent, but that would be an example of how that could use. Maybe I'll leave this at zero for now, just so keep it simple when I apply it. Otherwise, people will be wondering, why is that extra $100 there? Um, the calendar, so this is how we plan to pay the money out. So again, if you're actually doing a resource and cost loaded schedule, then you should set this up according to how you plan to pay the money out. And so prorated is typically the best you're going to get for somebody that you pay like weekly or every two weeks. So prorated is good for like employees typically. Subtrades, usually you're not going to pay them till they finish the activity that they're on. So if the activity is like 10 days or 20 days, at the end of that 20 days, you're going to pay them this amount. So then it would be best to put that at the end, right? And it's important if you get more advanced or as we get further into our Microsoft project for beginners, I'll do a, a video on cash flow. It's nice to see how the cash is applied to the actual project and when it's flowing out. So you can see when the money is flowing out based on how you apply it. But it'll be realistic if you pay attention to this. For example, the site super, if this was a one year long project, it's not, but if it was, and I put this at the start, and say the site super makes $100,000 in a year, they, you know, whatever it works out to at that $100, they work $100,000, I put at the start, it means you're giving them a check for $100,000 the first day. So that'll show cash flow, $100,000 going out the first day. Or if you put it at the end, because if you assign them to the whole project, they're going to be there the whole time. If you put it at the end, they're not going to get paid till the end. Neither one of those is going to work. So prorated is about as close as you're going to get. So that's pretty good. When you have work, you actually, when you create uh, a resource, you actually can, uh, you can assign a special calendar to them. You can create a calendar like we talked about in the previous video and assign that calendar. So the site super could have all their holidays in a unique calendar for the site super if you wanted to go to that extent, it's possible to do that. So it's just giving you some heads up on these parts. And of course, if you wanted to have an account code or something you wanted to tie um, the individuals to, you could also do that. So that gives you sort of the overview of creating the resource sheet. Now, if I slide to the left, none of this has done anything to my project yet, none of it. Right? It's creating a separate table. Now we have to make the different tables communicate to each other. So how are we going to get the tables to communicate to each other? So I'm going to slide to the left 
and I'm going to go to the Gantt chart. So I slide to the left, I right click my mouse, slide to the left, right click your mouse and go to Gantt chart. We're currently in the resource sheet. We're going to go to the Gantt chart. Right. So now we're back to square one. Now you notice this bar, your screen might be somewhere here or here. If it's here, you can pull it a little bit more and see that it says resource names. Now that you created these resources, you'll see them listed there and you could apply them through this. I wouldn't apply them through here typically, uh, especially if it's cost loaded because you really can't do too much um, to them this way. Microsoft Project lets you do things four or five different ways. And again, you're welcome to do it whatever way you want. I'll show you the way that I typically do it. Like another way that you can apply resources, you double click on the activity. You remember from our earlier videos that brings up the task information box, right? And see there's a tab called resources. So I can go to that resource tab and I can pull down and I can assign them there, right? And I can put units and I can put costs. I still don't usually um, go and do it that way. You can, because it does allow you to do a fair bit of detail that way. The way I usually do it is I go to the resource tab and I go assign resources, right? So I go assign resources. And this is a unique kind of box because you can do stuff outside the box while this box is open. So if I wanted to add a new activity, I could do that. You know, usually when you open up a dialog box like this, it doesn't let you do anything outside the box. This actually lets you do things outside the box. So, you know what? I want to assign some resources. I'm going to say that for this particular project, I want to assign the uh, site super 100% to this project. So if I just want them 100%, I could do it two ways. I could just click assign or I could type in here 100. For now, I'm just going to keep it simple, assign and it puts 100%. And it says $20,800. So it says $20,800. Well, where did it get that number from? Very important if you're gonna do cost loading on scheduling software, you should know how it's getting the numbers. You can check the numbers if you ever want to. Uh, so you should have a good idea. Well, we said we we're, that's why I picked a nice even number, $100 an hour. We said we were playing the site super $100 an hour. So that's 100. There's eight hours in a day. So that's times eight. And there's 26 days. We're, these are work days from when you start the project to when you finish. So when, from when you start, doesn't matter. We got a bunch of stuff happening at the same time. It's not adding these up. It's telling you from when you start to when you finish, how many work days there are. So I'm going to multiply that by 26 and it should give me that number 20,800 right so you should be able to see that I hope 20,800 good for you to know where the numbers come from all right so then I'm going to start applying resources oh before I do that I got the site super applied 100% now let's say you don't want somebody the whole project applied so the PM I'm going to apply them 50%. They're going to be there half the time. Maybe this is a small project and they got other projects that they're working on. So we've allocated a budget of 50% to this particular item. So I'm going to say 50% and I'm going to assign them there. So that's why it's half as much, right? It's basically 13 days. So you're, they're kind of working between different projects. Happens all the time in every kind of industry. Uh, construction for sure, especially uh, smaller projects, companies doing that. Um, so we have that assignment. It could be 30%. It could be 20%. It just depends what you've budgeted for that and what it, time it's going to take, expected to take. All right. Task one. Let's say that I have the drywall sub and I want to apply them to task one. And they're going to have a cost. So at the end of task one, I intend to pay them $5,000, right? So I intend to pay them $5,000. So I would assign $5,000 to the drywall sub. The drywall sub supplier, all right, I'm also going to get delivered a bunch of drywall. So let's say I'm going to get 10,000 square feet. So if I just put 10,000 in units and press enter, it puts 5,000, right? Because 10,000 square feet at 50 cents a square foot, remember that's what we put in the resource sheet for the cost, 
You can go back in the video to see that if you want to see the resource sheet. 10,000 square feet, all right? So now it's going to be $5,000. So that's putting those onto this resource. Now, I could continue on with this. So in other words, I would have the plumber and the plumber I would say is going to be a cost. You know, I, I put it units and it's like, it won't let me put five plumbers. It won't let me um, put, uh, you know, a unit number in here. Why won't it let me do that? Well, that's because remember we made plumbers a cost. So that's why it only lets me put in a cost over here. So I'm gonna say $4,000 when they finish task two and you assign it. And so you continue on with this and assigning different resources. Now laborers should be interesting because I, if you recall, I made uh, laborers, actually I could probably do it more interestingly over on this activity here. Notice how we've got three activities happening at once over here. So maybe what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assign um, one labor, 100% to this one, one labor, 100% to that one. Now watch what happens when I assign to this one should start to should see a little Martian guy show up over here in the indicator column. I'm going to sign that. And you see the Martians or little red guys? Well, really is they're not Martians, but <laughs> I call them Martians. Okay, so this task has is over allocated. What does that mean? It means you put more resources occurring at one time than you said you have available right? So you've got them over allocated. So you, you either have to decide to take one off, to reschedule this work, you maybe link it to one of the other ones, or go back to the resource sheet, slide to the left, go to the resource sheet and say, you know what, we, we've got an extra resource. I'll just pull them off the other project. It's okay. I'll pull them off the other project. Because now I've said there's three available. And so now it's not over allocated. That's why it's not showing red anymore. So you have choices of things that you have that you can do there and that you can adjust things with. In, a, in the next resource video, I'll probably show you, you know, a little bit more on some of the things that happen with that. I just wanted to sort of give you a sort of a little bit of an intro of how you can add resources, how you can add costs. Uh, of course, the laborers here, that's seven days, right? So that's 100%, right? So that would, that number, 4,800, is coming from seven days times eight hours a day, which is 56, hour, 56 hours, I think. And I think we said 56 times $80 an hour. So that should be 4,480. So that's coming from, again, the information we put in our resource sheet. Uh, seven times eight times eighty dollars an hour so that should work out interestingly enough if I go back and I change this to 200% and I change this to 200% right watch what happens to the number of days so I'm gonna change this to 200% watch what happens to the number of days it shortened it to three and a half days. And of course it made it over allocated because I just said we had three. Now I've just added four because now we got two, three and four working at the same time. So that's what we call effort driven scheduling. It kind of makes sense. You know, you said that you're gonna have two laborers on this task, so it should take half the time. It keeps the money fixed. It's still 4,480, it just doubled up the laborer is working on it, so it takes half the time. But be careful, because maybe you look at that and say, yeah, but they're not gonna work quite as efficiently. You know, it's gonna take them four days, right? Well, so if you change that to four days and you go back, it's up to your cost though, because now there's two of them working four days, right? Instead of three and a half. So that, that happens in MS Project when you add resources and that's why, and we call it effort-driven scheduling. I'll get into that a little bit more in some future videos. As I said, I just want to introduce you to the basics today. Uh, if we also uh, want to see, well, what kind of costs have we applied to this project? Well, this is again getting used to switching between screens, Microsoft Project for Beginners. Right click on the square icon box. This, remember, this is where I like to switch between screens. Go to cost. And this is how much money we've applied to the whole project. 
$61,840. This is how much we've applied to the individual tasks. All right, so sorry, uh, this, yeah, this is how much we've applied to the individual tasks. We've got 5,000, 10,000, that's another 5,000, right? And the reason these don't add up to this is because we applied the uh, PM and the site super to that top activity. So again, I'm just switching between screens and the cost, right? So if you ever get stuck, why doesn't this add up? Why? You Because you added some trades or some people to or some costs to a summary task. It doesn't show it in here in the line item beside it. You can't see it as readily. Um, you can see it if you go back to the entry view and you look at resources, right? And the resource names, you can see it there, uh, how it's been applied. One more thing that I'll mention here, because again, you got to open it up to see everything that's applied, right? Is that you can also drill down a little bit. So you see how oh, I got laborers here, laborers there, laborers there. And each one is a different amount, right? Like I go to this activity, 5,120. This one, 6,400. This one, 5,120 again. Okay, great. How much have I applied to all of them? Oh, wow, I got to add all these up. That's a little bit of a pain. So remember earlier I was saying you can go to the View tab. You can filter. Look at this. Look at this. This is great stuff. Filter for using resource. What resource? Labors. And it'll show you the summary task, but it will only show you the labor is there so you could see that you could go to the cost tab and just see them right together so these are the the three that are here this is just still shows you the summary if you don't want to see the summary again customizing it all these little tips i show you in between as we go through the different videos they'll build and you'll learn from them um, i would go to the format tab if i don't want the headings there you know you just click there and they're they're not shown for now if you want to bring it back you just bring it back right now, if I wanted to see what this totals up to be, there's also a way of doing that. But before I go, because you're a new user, always remember if you filter it that you did because you forget, you go off to do something else and it's like, wait a minute, where are all my other tasks? How do I get them back, right? So remember, you filtered it. It tells you it, it's filtered, right? Using resource. See, this says no highlight, no group. It's not filtered. No filter. Now we're back. I'm going to slide to the left again getting used to switching between screens. Go down to the resource sheet. Right click, go down to the resource sheet. All right, this is over allocated. I could always get rid of that, changing that to 400% or changing where they're located. Uh, I could do that. But this is one screen again of many in the resource sheet. So there's a square icon box here too. You can right click, go to cost. Look at this. How much I've applied to each one for the whole project. See how labors? It's the sum of those three activities that we applied the laborer to, three or four, right? that we applied the laborers to. It adds it up for you. And later on, look at this. When we start setting a baseline, it's going to remember these costs. And then when they change, we'll be able to see the variance in the future as we build on our learning with... Uh, project scheduling because the real advantage to scheduling is being able to track your cost track your time and make recoveries and make adjustments that's where the beauty of using any kind of scheduling software you know I teach Microsoft project doesn't mean that I think that's the only scheduling software out there there's lots of good uh, different softwares out there but principally they should be able to do these things uh, so that it make, allows you to manage your projects effectively so that you know where you're at at any one point in time. It shouldn't tell you how to do it. You should be able to tell it. All right, so I've got all of these. I'm going to slide to the left here. I'm going to right click, go back to my Gantt chart, and I've got my cost there. I'm in my cost screen. I can see where they are at. I can go and I can check my entry screen. I'm back. That's usually where I'd like to do my editing and adding of activities and setting up of things um, for the project. So that's what I wanted to cover today in Microsoft Project Made Easy. If you enjoyed this video, uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just click the icon there, subscribe and notification. It helps me out and it helps us build this community together. I really want to grow this community in scheduling project management and construction project management especially. Uh, so let's work together. If you have any 
uh, comments or questions, ideas uh, for other videos, it's always helpful for me too. I'm Tom Stevenson, wishing you a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.